Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to this video on the CompTIA Security Plus course, Log, File Maintenance and Security. The planning, maintenance and security of the log files should be thoroughly considered. A few things to take into, to take into account include the configuration and saving of the log files, backing up of the files and securing and encrypting the files before setting up any type of logging system. You should consider the amount of disk space or other form of memory that the log files will require. You should also contemplate all the different information necessary to reconstruct logged events later. Are the logs stored in multiple locations? Were they encrypted? Were they hashed for integrity? Also up for consideration is the level of detail you will allow in the log. Verbose logging is something that admins apply to get as much information as possible. Also, is the organization interested in exactly when an event occurred? If so, timestamping should be incorporated. Although many systems do this by default, some organizations opt not to opt to not use timestamping to reduce CPU usage. Log files can be saved to different to a different partition of the logging system or saved to a different system altogether although the latter requires a fast secondary system and a fast network the size and overwriting configuration of the file should play into your considerations figure 1311 shows an example of the properties of a windows server log file currently the file is about 74 MB but can grow to a maximum of 131072 kilobyte 128 MB. Although 128 MB might not sound like a lot, large, larger organizations can eat that up quickly because they will probably audit and log a lot of users action when the files get big. Log mining becomes important. There can be thousands and thousands of entries making it difficult for an admin to sort through them all, but several third party programs can make the mining of specific types of log entries much simpler. You can also note in the figure that the log is set to overwrite events if the log reaches its maximum size. Security is a growing concern with organizations in general so the chances are that they would not want events overwritten instead you would select do not overwrite events clear log manually as an admin you would save and back up the log monthly or weekly and clear the log at the beginning of the new time period to start a new log if the log becomes full for any reason you should have an alert to set up to notify you or another admin as with any security configurations or files, the log files should be backed up. The best practice is to copy the files to a remote log server. The files could be backed up to a separate physical offsite location or WORM. Write once read many media types could be utilized. WORM options such as DVDR and other optical disks are good ways to back up log files but not rewrite optical disks mind you usb flash drives and usb removable hard drives should not be allowed in any area where computer where a computer stores log files one way or another a retention policy should be in place for your log files meaning they should be retained for future reference securing the log files can be done in several ways first by employing the aforementioned backup methods second by setting permissions to the actual log file figure 1311 shows the file name for the security log security.evtx located in system route system 32 win evt logs Sorry, when EVT logs, yeah. This is where you would go to configure NTFS permissions. Just remember that by default, this file inherits its permissions from the parent folder. 
file integrity is also important when securing log files. Encrypting log files through the concept known as hashing is a good way to verify the integrity of the log files if they are moved and or copied. And finally, you could flat out encrypt the entire contents of the file so that others cannot so that other users cannot view it. Auditing systems and security settings. So far we have conducted audits on object access and log files, but we still need to audit security system security settings. For example, we should review user permissions and group policies for user access. We are most concerned with shared folders on the network and their permissions. Your file server or distributed file system server can easily um, show you all the shares it contains. This knowledge can be obtained on a Windows server by navigating to computer management, system tools, shared folders, shares as shown in figure 13.12. Notice the IT share. There are a couple of things that bequeak my interest from the get-go. For starters, the shared folder is located in the C drive of this server. Shared folders should actually be on a different partition drive or even on a different computer. Second, it is in the root. This isn't a good practice either, of course. This is just a test folder that we created previously. But we should definitely consider location of our shared folders. Either way, we know where the IT share is located and can go to that folder's properties and review the permissions first as shown in figure 13 um, 13. In the figure you can see that IT1 group has a read and execute list folder contents and read permissions. It is wise to make sure that individual users and groups of users do not have more permissions than necessary or allowed. It is also important to verify proper ownership of the folder. In this example, it can be done by clicking the advanced button within the IT properties dialog box. Figure 1314 shows that sysadmin is the owner of this resource. We want to make sure that no one else has inadvertently or maliciously taken control. While you are in the advanced security settings dialog box, you can check what auditing settings have been implemented and whether they correspond to an organization's written policies. Speaking of policies, computer policies should be reviewed as well. Remember that there might be different policies for each department in an organization. This would match up with the various organizational units on a Windows server, figure 1315 shows the security settings section of the marketing policy we created in chapter 5 application security i haven't counted them but there are probably thousands of settings due to this an organization might opt to use a security template if this is the case verify that the proper one is being used and that the settings included in that template take into account what the organization has defined as part of its security plan. Templates are accessed by right clicking security settings and selecting import policy. If a template is not being used you will need to go through as many policy objects as possible, especially things such as password policy, security options and the audit policy itself. Individual computers will probably use user account control and adhere to the policies created on the server. A spot check should be made of individual computers to verify that they are playing by the rules in some cases. An organization will require that all client computers are checked. Auditing can be a lot of work, so plan your time accordingly and be ready for a few hiccups along the way. SIEM. Your security monitoring can be augmented by using a security information and event um, management SEIM solution. SIEM products combine security event management and security information management products such as HP's ArcSight and IBM's QRadar offer real-time monitoring 
of systems and logs and automation in forms of alerts and triggers. Some of the capabilities of SIEM solutions include data aggregation, which can combine data from network devices, servers and applications, correlation engines which automatically look for common attributes of events across the various monitored platforms, compliance with government regulatory auditing processes and forensic analysis. SIEM also include WORM functionality so that information once written cannot be modified when correlating data it provides for automatic duplication or the elimination of redundant data. It may also include scanning for configuration compliance also known as configuration compliance manager functionality. Chapter summary. In the previous chapter we discussed treating your IT infrastructure as more of an entity and less of a collation of less of a collection of technologies. That philosophy of the synergy between man and computer is nothing novel. The idea dates back to John von Neumann, but the extension of this synergy between disparate IT systems and the security administrators that protect them is an outlook that is being applied by more and more IT professionals. Protect is the key word here. Do, to do so effectively means to apply hands-on continuous monitoring that enables an already secure organization to assess weakness in real time, track the growth of the IT infrastructure and provides a glimpse of what is to be. But then there is also the Monday morning quarterbacking, the investigation of negative occurrences, the reference to historical anomalies. In short, the auditing of the IT infrastructure is that it's that it's that imperative digging into the past coupled with protective monitoring that can ensure the stability of an IT infrastructure. Now that we can wax poetic until we are blue in the face, but all the pontification in the world won't provide the hands-on extension required to meticulously and methodically define the IT environment. For example, it's the IDS IPS solutions that will provide you with actual statistics concerning the behavior of data and any anomalies that may present themselves. It's the concrete baselining with tools such as performance monitoring and Wireshark that supplies analytics about the health of your servers and the types of data passing through them. This is a myriad of other analytical tools at your disposal. The command line included with each type of operating system has a huge variety of utilities that can bestow the bulk of the answers you are looking for about your computers. Plus, there are seemingly countless third-party applications available, some free and some for a fee that can help to fill any knowledge gaps about your or about your computer network. The detective in you will require periodic audits. In some cases, an organization requires that this is done by an incident and by an independent consultant. However, your honor will probably require that you conduct occasional audits as well, review your ACLs permissions and policies, but especially keep a watchful eye on your security logs. These are some of the most important analytics that you will possess. They explain who did what and when it occurred and possibly why. Define strong auditing policies, implement them and enforce them, review them often and back them up. Finally, we made mention of the von Neumann mindset. As an IT infrastructure becomes more complex and data gets bigger and computers become smarter, this ideal becomes all the more vital. I'm not saying to pat your server on the back end, uh, sorry, on the back and tell it everything's going to be okay, but rather provide your IT infrastructure with a sort of compassion that will nurture it and help it to grow. So I'm going to leave it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.